It's biology with Mr. B. Biology with Mr. B. That's me. Hello all. Uh, this is hopefully a really quick one. Um, just look. Oh, hello. What are you doing? Hopefully a relatively quick YouTube lesson looking at heart structure, just going over sort of the ins and outs. Um, pretty much all of it is a recap from GCSE, and certainly to those of you with a sports studies background as well, that this should be nice and straightforward. But still, I've got me spec points on the front there, as well as my face. Um, the external internal structure of a malian heart. In other words, if I gave you a actual heart, would you be able to like this work out which is which? If I gave you diagrams, would you be able to point out and label bits, whether this is internal structure or the bits on the outside? The second spec point is a bit more difficult, obviously, given the circumstances, but it's the idea around the dissection skills and the PAG skills, um, examination drawing. So obviously, if you're going to do this in exams, well, what's the, the best type of practice is to try and do it in real life, which obviously is a shame given the circumstances, but you know, we'll see what we can do, uh, see what we can do regardless. So here it goes. Uh, there you go. That is, that's your heart. You're welcome. There you go. Less, lesson over. No, maybe not. Um, okay. So this is the sort of thing that you should, you should be able to label, um, for your a level so we've got labeling of all the main uh, arteries and veins that feed into and out of the heart so there's four blood vessels involved uh, the names of the four main chambers the names of the four main valves as well so put them together we've got 12 things we can label i'm, I'm gonna I'll keep the, so you can see that when you want, but I'm going to just move on because we're going to just clarify some bits of this. So the first thing to try and get across is what blood vessels are we dealing with? What are the four blood vessels involved? We have aorta. Think of the aorta as the main artery in that body, the main blood vessel taking blood away from the heart and delivering it to your body cells. It's connected up to the left ventricle and it carries oxygenated blood to every part of the body except the lungs. The vena cava is connected to the right atrium and it brings the deoxygenated blood back from the tissues of the body. So again, think of the vena cava as the main vein. It's the final vein that actually feeds back into the heart carrying deoxygenated blood. You'll see on diagrams as well, we'll go back, that there are, it's usually labelled as two, a superior vena cava and an inferior vena cava. It's the same, same vein, guys, but the superior vena cava is bringing the blood back from the top part of your body, like the head, and the inferior vena cava is bringing the blood back from the lower part of your body, like your legs and abdomen. Final two are the pulmonary arteries and veins. Pulmonary artery connects to the right ventricle and it carries deoxygenated blood to the lungs. Pulmonary vein is connected to the left atrium and brings oxygenated blood back from the lungs. So the pulmonary artery, pulmonary vein are weird because they do not carry the type of blood you'd expect. An artery would usually, in all circumstances, carry oxygenated blood away from the heart delivering it to cells. Pulmonary artery is the opposite. Pulmonary artery is delivering blood away from the heart, arteries away, but it's carrying the deoxygenated blood to the lungs to pick up the oxygen. And the pulmonary vein does a uh, vice versa job. So the pulmonary vein is going back to the heart. That is the job of a vein um, under very low pressure. So same sort of structure. But it, because it's just been to the alveoli, it is fully saturated with oxygen. The hemoglobin is saturated with oxygen. There's your blood vessels. Valves. So I'm labelling these as bicuspid and tricuspid. I'm labelling them as that because I can't remember exactly what the textbook says and not having a hard copy, I can't be sure. So I'm just gonna cover my back here. Uh, certainly I know if you do sports studies, they'll do it as bicuspid, tricuspid. Bicuspid and tricuspid valves are found between the atria and the ventricles of your heart. So again, if I just scroll back, the atria are the two upper chambers here and here, and the ventricles are the two lower chambers here and here. So four chambers in total, atrium and ventricles. Notice that the right atria is always on the left hand side of the page and the left atria and left ventricle on the right hand side of the page. You've always got to think of it as being actually inside your body. So as if you're looking at this on your laptop or something, turn the laptop around so it would be faced on your chest, then I promise it makes sense. 
So bicuspid, tricuspid are the valves found between the atria and the ventricle, and they prevent backflow of blood. So all the blood that goes from the atria to the ventricle, none of it should go backwards, back to the atria, back to the veins. It should be able to keep going along the journey, uh, atrium, then ventricle, and then out the heart, out via an artery. So the bicuspid and tricuspid valve help prevent that. Both of these valves are known as atrioventricular valves because they're between the atrium and the ventricles. I'm quietly confident that is how the textbook describes them. In terms of knowing a difference between bicuspid and tricuspid, they're, they're not perfectly identical. They've got the same job, not perfectly identical. It's all about how many flaps they have. Uh, tricuspid, tricuspid has a lovely three flap approach, where the bicuspid is a two flappy flap approach. In ten, if you, you ever get to dissect a heart, it's the sort of thing that you do look for to try to find those three flaps in the tricuspid valve. So the tricuspid is always in the right, between the right atrium and right ventricle. That's why it's got an R in it. Right R. Tricuspid has an R. Uh, bicuspid is always on the left. There's no L in bicuspid. Sorry. I, I just have to remember it using the right and the R bit of the tricuspid. The final valves are the semilunar valves. And these are two valves. They, these are identical in structure. Uh, found between the ventricles and the arteries. So there is a semilunar valve between the left ventricle and the aorta and a semilunar valve between the right ventricle and the pulmonary artery. And pre they prevent the backflow of blood into those ventricles. So when the ventricle is pumped and it's pushed all the blood out into those arteries, they should, the, the blood will never be able to get back into the heart in, via back into the ventricle. It would have to be travel all the way around the body till it gets back to the next atria in, in the other side of the heart. So there's your valves. Lastly, is a little look at externally. If you look at a heart, you get one in front of you, um, the first thing you'll be able to identify is a lot of different blood vessels on its surface. And these are the coronary arteries and veins. These blood vessels are absolutely essential to supply the heart wall itself with oxygen, glucose, nutrients, so that the muscle cells, the cardiac muscle cells in the heart can respire. And obviously, the coronary veins would remove any wastes. Looking at different muscle types, and cardiac muscle is one of them, is something we do in year 13 in a module 5 topic. It is one of those things, if you're looking for an extension, looking actually, what is cardiac muscle? What makes it different to skeletal muscle? That's something that you could, could look into. We'll get into actually how the heart muscle like contracts and works and so on in, a, in the next lesson, but we won't look specifically at cardiac muscle just yet this year. So if you were, were to block these coronary arteries, that is how you generate a heart attack or a myocardial infarction. If they are blocked and the oxygen and glucose can't get to the heart to a particular area in that heart wall, well that area of the heart wall won't be able to respire won't be able to produce ATP, and therefore won't be able to participate in its contracting. And bear in mind, the heart should continuously be contracting um, at a set rhythm. If it's not, that, that's very much you're dead. Lovely. So that's heart attacks. So in terms of dissections, um, I, found, I found my two favourite ones are on YouTube that you can have a look at. And you are very, very welcome to use the instruction sheet that I'll also email over to you. I'll email these links as well so you don't have to just uh, try and copy them down from this video. Um, yeah, if, if you are going to get hands of your heart yourself by going to a butcher's and stuff, yeah, absolutely go for it. I'll send you the instruction sheet so just be very, very careful with any knives or scissors or anything like that you may use. Uh, the sheep's heart dissection is only a couple minute long. It really is a very much a basics of this is kind of how we use a scalpel. Uh, the ox heart dissection is a little bit more varied. Um, obviously ox's hearts are huge. So do give that a look. Um, I couldn't find any dissections of anything really larger than an ox. But if you if you haven't seen like the little videos of when they did the blue whale heart, um, in a documentary or so on a fair few years ago please do search on youtube for like blue whale hearts um it's absolutely it's really really cool just how large they are so your job 
What I'd like you to do, whether you're doing this with an actual heart in front of you or you're doing this with a diagram that hopefully you've drawn, but if you've just like printed a template, that's absolutely fine. We all have different talents. What I'd like you to do is to try and label everything you can. So externally, can you label what the coronary arteries and something called the pericardium would be? Internally, can you label your different chambers, ventricles and atria? Can you label all your different valves, bicuspid, tricuspid, semilunars? Can you label your four main blood vessels, aorta, vena cava, pulmonary artery, pulmonary vein? Can you label your septum? Because if you can, and you can do that, and you're happy with that, then you're on to a winner, and you'll be absolutely ready for our lessons next week to do with actual to do with actually how the, how this process actually works, looking at it from more, more of like a nerve, nervous sort of control sort of idea as well. So last little bit for me, just some little questions to think about. So if you want to have a go at these, pause me, because I'm, I'm going to go through them. Here we go, going through. Uh, correct sequence of the four main blood vessels and the four heart chambers, that is a red, that red blood cell will pass through on its journey from the lungs through the heart and body back into the lungs. So if it's just gone to the lungs, the first uh, blood vessel it will go through would be the pulmonary vein to take it back to the left atria. It will then pass through the bicuspid valve, because it's le left, bicuspid valve, atrioventricular valve, into the left ventricle. It will then, uh, the left ventricle will squeeze and it will push it up out the semilunar valve, out to the aorta. And they also will deliver it to body cells. All the oxygen and glucose will be diffused across in the capillaries and all that lovely tissue fluid formation. And eventually all the waste of carbon dioxide will go into that blood. Oh, I've gone. And the blood will uh, travel back through various different veins until it gets to a vena cava. Superior or inferior, depending on where it's been. Vena cava delivers that blood into the right atria then passes through the tricuspid valve, a atrioventricular valve, into the right ventricle, which pushes the blood through a semilunar valve into the pulmonary artery. And then it gets to the lungs. And you're back. And your journey is complete. Second one. Why does the left ventricle have a thicker wall than the right ventricle? The left ventricle is delivering blood to the aorta and then to the every single body cell every single body cell. The distance travelled is significantly higher than the distance between the right ventricle's job, which is just to the lungs and the alveoli. Bear in mind the heart and the lungs are literally sandwiched next to each other uh, structurally inside your chest. So because it's got a further distance, it needs, a, it needs to generate a higher pressure in that blood so that it can get to those cells quick enough to meet your metabolic demand. So thicker wall, stronger wall, more muscular wall. Bicuspid and tricuspid were your atrioventricular valves. So the tricuspid has the R, so that's in the between the right atrium ventricle, and then bicuspid is between the left and uh, atrium and left ventricle. Semilunar valves are between the ventricles and the arteries. So there are semilunar valves between the right ventricle and pulmonary artery, and between the left ventricle and the aorta. What causes a heart attack? A blockage in the coronary arteries. A blockage in the coronary arteries, preventing the blood and therefore preventing the oxygen, the glucose, getting to those aspiring cells that need it to generate ATP for contraction. So if they don't get it, they don't get the glucose, don't get the oxygen, they can't aspire, can't get ATP, can't contract, that is a heart attack because those cells will die. So in your booklet, there are some tasks you could do. I'm not going to make you do them, but you could do them if you wish to. It starts with task. It's a bit weird. I think it's like a couple of task 10s, unless I've been able to relabel it. Uh, there's a task 10 in there, which is just focused on heart structure. Not or not those like more AS level style questions uh, that I set sort of last week about hemoglobin uh, curves and things. Um, so yeah, so task 10, task 11, I think even task 12 is to do with heart structure before we get onto the cardiac cycle. So you're welcome to do them if you wish, but it's completely your call. So yeah, that's all I've got today, boys and girls. Uh, give this a, a good look over. Try your best to get your own drawing done, or if you can get access to your own hearts, do your own dissection. On the email, there'll be the links, there'll be... Um, 
there'll be uh, instructions for if you always do your own dissection. So I hope you look forward to that. Thank you very, very much. Bye.